If you are interested in just writing code along with me, surely this is going to complete the project that we are about to make. But my goal here is to make you understand what's going under the hood and what are the concepts that are actually pulling off this particular theme that we are going here. So make sure that you have a little bit of the patience and you spend a little extra time in understanding the concepts so that you can make way more interesting things than what we have pulled up here. So CSS is more about illusions that we create. It's almost like a magic to the person who doesn't understand it. But for a coder, it's more over like a practice of magic. So let me show you that. So in this concept, we are just pulling off something like this. So whenever a mouse over is uh, coming up here, we are just pulling off of our icon and you can see nice 3D space is going on in here. Now this is super easy to do, uh, but first we need to understand a few concepts. Now usually for the documentation of JavaScript or probably for majority of CSS stuff, I prefer Mozilla develop, uh, Developer Network. MDN is way better in the documentation as compared to whatever I have seen on the web. But for this one exception, I would go on to W3School. It's not my favorite, so don't take it uh, from here. I usually prefer MDN, but this is more over a tutorial aspect and I need to show you some things. That's why I'm preferring this. So we are talking about just one property here, which is transform property. And it has a lot of things that you can do, like you can rotate the things, you can skew the things, you can scale the things. We're gonna be using the two, which is rotate and skew here. Not skewing of X and Y, but on the both axis. And to a little bit of the varying degree we are gonna be using. So that's the one thing that you need to take here. If you go a little bit uh, deeper here, you're gonna realize that we have more properties here, which are translate X and Y and translate 3D, or if you want to just play on one axis. We'll be playing in both axis, X and Y. So how does this translate actually works? You simply go ahead and you just say translate on 10 pixel. It just moves it to the 10 pixels on the X axis. Similarly, 20 pixels on the X axis. You can also mention the both of the axis and then it's gonna go a little bit on the X axis and a little bit onto the Y axis as well. Pretty simple so far. Now you can definitely go onto the negative side as well and that's gonna move uh, up here. Now what they are not telling you one important concept that you need to understand here, that this is just regular division which is up here. This is not the translate being applied onto something special. Once you apply a property of something here, which is rotate and skew, then the regular x-axis and the y-axis also changes. Right now, the x-axis is on just horizontal and the y-axis is all uh, from top to bottom. But once you apply the concepts of a rotate as well as skew, uh, those axes have changed a little bit. And this alone, one concept is gonna understand and will help you to create this illusion that we are having here. Now these illusions are not really, you can design like anything, you just need a little bit more help, uh, probably some designer or something. So let me show you what I've got here. Uh, let me open up this guy here. So this is the image asset that we have and I tried it with a couple of more assets here as well. Uh, didn't work out well in that case. So what we are gonna be working with that, uh, first is this 4.png that I've created in which an icon is being placed on a markup. And of course, I'll link all of these assets in the description section on my GitHub. Uh, so please check that out. All of these assets are available. And on apart from this, we'll be using another asset, which is 5.png, which is exactly the same dimension as a 4, but it has just this one icon here. Now, usually people prefer to do all these skewing in the graphic itself. It's actually better, but you can surely do that with just CSS as well. So this is these are the two assets we'll be using. Yes, I know there are others as well. I tried it a little bit, but this is all what we are having. So let's understand that how we can actually uh, pull this off. It's actually pretty simple. So let me just close these guys. Uh, so first and foremost, let's go up with the two files that we are having here, which is index.html and style.css. So obviously we are gonna use Emmet to have this one. So this is all good. We need to link the CSS as well. So I'm gonna simply say link colon CSS and there we go, style.css is linked up. Now don't worry too much. This is a few shortcuts that I'm using from Emmet. I do have a free course on that. So in case you are interested, check that out at Learn Code Online. Now let's go ahead and create a div, which is going to have a class of container 
there we go and inside that we're going to be pulling up some of the images as well so this image is going to have a source the first image that we are going to be using is going to be 4.png which is again included in the asset now not only that we need a couple of more images but first i'm going to be just keeping it as 4.png and would like to show you some of the things that we are about to do so let's just save this and I would like to open this up with the live server so that it goes up. There we go. So this is the image that we are having. It's a pretty big image. We're going to be shrinking it down a little bit. So first and foremost, let's go up at the top and define some of the properties for the body. We don't need much of the properties in the body, but we'll be definitely aligning a few things. So first and foremost, I want the display to be flex and I want everything to be centered so just two properties justify content is going to be center and the align item is also going to be at the center so save that and things should be at the center no big deal we have seen that many times probably in this in the uh, entire thing and we're going to be changing the width to 100 percent just to be sure we don't need it but i'll still give it we need a background color of all black because we are going for a little bit darker theme here so there we go, we have pulled it off nice and easy. Now we want to go for this entire container in which my entire image is being placed. So let's go for a container, there we go, a class of container that I'm targeting. I want a position of relative in this case, and yes, it's important to have a relative position. Now I'm gonna choose up a width. First, I'm gonna write that, then I'm gonna show you why I have picked up this particular width. So the width is gonna be 360 pixels and the height that I'm going for is gonna be uh, 640 pixels. Now it's time to do a little bit of the math. So let me fire up my uh, calculator. There we go. Where is my, there is Vega. So what I have, uh, why I have picked up these particular images is first and foremost, these are mobile devices and you know, these are kind of HD. So the HD dimension is 1920 by 1080. But if you flip that up, it's 1080 by 1920. So first I went up with uh, 1920 and I thought that I'm going to be going half of that. I went for that. It was still too big. So instead of that, I again went for 1920 and I tried uh, a third of it so that gave me 640 and similarly for 360 pixels so you got it now okay moving forward uh, that's a fun math so let's move forward now I would like to also put up a background here now the background I have a specific color in mind uh, which I have picked it up so it's going to be 6110F5 this is more over like a purple-ish color uh, you can see that here it is going on so this is the color. I'm working on purple a lot these days. But anyways, now the next thing that I want to do is uh, I want to have it uh, a transform property as well. So let's go for the transform property. And I would like to put two properties here that we just have seen. The one is rotate and another one is skewing here. So first and foremost, the rotate property, uh, we're going to go for negative 25 degrees on this one. And the skewing is also going to go for positive uh, 25 degrees. Once I save this one here, uh, notice here everything is now skewed a little bit and looking pretty good so far. And we are also going to mention a property of transition, which is going to take a bit of time. You can surely choose ease in, ease out. I'm going to just choose a time, which is 0 0.5 seconds to make things smoother. Right now, it's not going to make much effect here, but surely it's going to kick in uh, within a few seconds. Okay, so this is all going great. And I just also want to mention uh, one more property here, just in case I want to mention uh, the entire height of this as well. So I'm going to say 100% of the viewport height. Not really compulsory, but this is going to make things a little bit better. Okay, so these uh, couple of properties are looking pretty good so far, and we are all good. Now, we want to go and target for the image as well. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to say dot container. Inside that, there is an image. So target that. And what we're going to do is we're going to put up a position, this time of absolute. There we go. Why absolute? Because I want to stack all the images just one above the other. Right now I have just one image, but I'll be adding more. So I want to stack them about just, just one up or above the other. So that's why I'm choosing absolute here. I'm going to go for width of 100%, no doubt in that. And we will again be putting up a transition property of 0 0.5 second to make everything smooth. Okay. So there we go. This is looking decent, but not really the thing that I really want to have. 
Now, after that, I have another image here. So let me show you. This is again the exact image. So in this exact spot, we are having this icon, but this time rest of all the things are gone. So that's what we want to have. So let's go up here and we are going to be introducing more images. So let's go up here. I'll just add more images, probably one, two, three, four. So four in total. Now all the bottom images are going to be having the 5.png for the look that we are going, but definitely you can have a mix and match. Depends on what look you are going up for. When I save this, this is not going to look much of the difference, but just for sure that you can see it, I have actually misplaced a little bit onto the downside so that you can see the difference between the one in here. So let me show you one more time here. I'm going to cut all of this, save this, and now you can see there is no uh, multiple icons going on. But here, if I just do a command Z a couple of times, save that, and now you can see the difference that multiple icons are here. This surely could have been perfected, but just to make sure that you understand the concept, I have made it this way. Okay, so there we go. Now comes up the part where we do some of the hover effect. Okay, so let's go into the style.css and what we want to do is we want to have an hover. So let's copy this one and paste it up here. And this time we are going to be saying that I want the entire container to be having an effect on hover. And for the image, we'll be picking up all the childs. So let's go for the nth child. First, we're going to go for fourth uh, child. But again, we can see here there's one, two, three, four. So all of them are here. If you have more, just feel free to add it like this way. So what we want to do now, we want to use the property that we studied about, which is transform. And in that we studied about translate. Translate 3D is also there, but we're going to go for X and Y direction. Remember, we have skewed the things. That's why the X and Y direction are not your regular. This is going to produce some of the skewing effect. So amount of degrees of skewing is going to be the amount of the degrees your X and Y also have skewed a little bit. Let me show you that. So we're going to go for 120 pixels a bit on the X axis and 120 degree on the negative side on the Y axis as well. And of course, I would love to put up some of the opacity as well to give it a bit of cool effect. This, uh, the top one is going to be having a full opacity. When I save this, now notice here, this icon is all pulling it off. If you want to go for this magical effect, you surely can go. But as I hover, just because my X and Y axis are being skewed, this is actually moving up here. So there we go. But I don't want this one to go something like this, although this is looking cool. I wanted a bit more of this. So what I can do is I can copy this and I can paste it for third, for second and for one as well. Let's go ahead and make those changes. So this is going to be third. This is going to be second and this is going to be one. Moving forward, I also want to do a little bit of the skewing because if I'll go directly like this, this is not going to make any sense at all because there we go. This is not making much of the sense. So what we want to do is we want to change the opacity as well as the degrees that we are going. So for the first image, if you'll just remove the first part as well, that's also fine, but different effect. Let's go. Let's stick to the what we are about to design. So we're going to move the opacity to 0 0.4 and I don't want this one to go that far at the very top. I'll just move it a bit here. So probably 30 pixels up here. Uh, this one to be just uh, like 50 pixels again totally on you and this one is gonna move uh, let's just say uh, 80 pixels something like that not 800 80 pixels there we go so make sure you have a little bit of the symmetry on where you are moving the things I would also like to give a little bit of the less opacity and moving at the top so this one is gonna be 0 0.6 and this one can be 0 0.7 Again, totally on you. We can play with the numbers. When I go up here, and now you can see this effect now kicking in a bit. I think actually this last one should be one that's gonna be a little bit of the better effect. So there we go, and there we go. This is looking a bit better. But again, uh, it, it's totally on you that how you can uh, craft this and master this illusion that we are trying to design. This is looking pretty cool. The first one is also looking pretty cool. Now it's time for assignment as well. How could you think that I'm not gonna give you any assignment? So here is the, your assignment. Right now we are having just pulling this effect. I'm gonna give you all these exercise files as well. The first thing that you have to do is I want a title at the very top and the center of it. 
make sure this is not an ordinary title. I want the title to animate a little bit as well. Feel free to use any JavaScript library too, but I want you to do it with the core CSS format. No JavaScript included, but if you include that's okay too, but try to do it just with the CSS. And also I want you to put a big button here that says learn code online and should also go onto the website as well. And make sure button is also skewed a little bit and is having some of the effects just like this. I think you can pull this off with the knowledge that you have gained in this video. So in case you have enjoyed this video, which I'm pretty sure you have, get, give this channel a subscribe as well as a thumbs up for this button uh, for this video. And I hope you have enjoyed it. That's it for this one and let's catch up in the next one.